Well, it's a new year and a new season of the HR agenda from Chief of Staff Asia. And to kick us off, we're looking at the HR scene in the Philippines. Can the national workforce there sustain the region's biggest post-COVID recovery? And how are businesses fighting the inevitable brain drain of skills to overseas markets? Shining a spotlight on all things HR, this is the HR agenda. Joining me today is Maricar Castillo Reyes, CEO of the Philippine based technology company Astacom. Maricar, welcome to the show. It's certainly a delight to have you with us. Thank you very much. One of the key challenges for the Philippines that came up time and time again in Chief of Staff Asia's most recent research paper uh, was the high level of attrition being faced by employers there. Um, there's Adding to that is that growing trend of quiet quitting, which is becoming increasingly popular in Southeast Asia at the moment, uh, where staff disengage with their work but keep drawing the paycheck. Marikar, is this something that you've been seeing? And uh, if so, what is Astacom doing to fight it? Thank you for that, Paul. No, um, You're right, high attrition rates and quiet quitting can stem from many factors. And, 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 but two that I would like to focus on would be one, talent development and mobility, and insufficient push of organizations for balancing between work and personal life. So at Asticom, we have implemented several key initiatives to develop our talents in a holistic approach. And we call that strategy, um, which revolves around the three Gs. Three Gs. Three G stands for gain, grow, and give. So in the game phase, we actively seek out for top talents, no? striving to position ourselves as a leading employer in the country. For GROW, we focus on developing talents from within the organization, where this process obviously requires more careful planning and dedication. And, and lastly, we also embrace the concept of giving or give, which emphasizes on talent mobility within the larger GLOBE or Ayala groups, promoting internal growth and reducing attrition. So to emphasize our commitment to work-life integration, our newly launched employer value proposition, which we call Best of Both Worlds, focuses on the balance between corporate stability and the energy of a startup. So in Asticom, we're dedicated to providing the necessary support for our employees to make sure that they work with meaning and obviously live with purpose. So I hope that answers your question, Paul. Certainly, well-being has really risen the ranks in terms of HR priorities across the globe uh, and in Southeast Asia as well. Uh, we're also aware that the younger generations in particular uh, really value opportunities for work-life balance. So from your experience, Marika, what else uh, sets Gen Z apart as key members of the Philippine workforce? Um, they are definitely adept at technology, they're quick learners, and they easily adapt to new tools, enhancing their work efficiency and shaping organizational culture. They also prioritize meaningful work aligned with their values and social consciousness. Is that having a broader impact on organizations in the Philippines? Uh, are you observing any effects that this generation's influence is having on working culture and does that have to therefore influence your own HR strategies uh, as a result. We've been really seeing that. More and more young talents today are more um, outspoken. They, they really speak about their minds and, and really share how they feel. Um, and, and, and that's an important cultural opportunity for us no, as a, an organization. Yes, it can be such a great contrast from previous generations, you know, ours included, uh, where people have been far more hesitant to speak up about the issues that really make them passionate. Uh, and I think the best organisations today are really embracing and leveraging off of that passion as much as they can. Uh, so, Marika, in the light of all of these issues, what should Philippine employers and Philippine HR leaders be on the lookout for uh, as we move into 2024 and the year of the drag? Thank you. That's a good question. There are a lot of issues, but I think if we were to sum it up into top three, the first is adapting their workforce to digital transformation. 
um, aligned to that is that apprehension of the workforce around uh, the concept of AI and automation. Second is fostering data-driven mindset. That, that in itself is a growing opportunity uh, for the HR leaders or the business leaders. And third and most important part, I believe that the challenge we need to address is really creating that purpose-driven organization. So HR leaders in the Philippines or in Asia uh, must spearhead initiatives that cultivate digital literacy, upskilling, and a tech-savvy mindset among employees. But it's really more on fostering a culture that embraces technological innovation as an opportunity for growth. So as business leaders, we, it is very important that we understand that information is a strategic asset. So the organizations that leverage on data analytics actually gain a more competitive edge versus other companies or, or other businesses. And finally, the most important uh, part that I would like to share is especially the young talents we have today, you know, the Gen Z um, side of it, and even non the, the non-Gen Zs, they are now looking at purpose-driven organization. So at Astipom, our enduring mission and purpose is to improve people's lives um, by emphasizing diversity, empowerment, and career progression for our employees. And we're happy that we have achieved a 60-40 gender ratio with a significant number of women in management positions and supported over 37,000 learning hours to accelerate our employees' development. Well, those are some very impressive numbers on the diversity question in particular. Uh, and it's clear you are particularly hands-on with your people strategy. We love that at Chief of Staff Asia. Uh, as we end, Marika, would you have any particular message for your fellow C-suites, uh, both in the Philippines and across the Southeast Asia region, uh, when it comes to HR and workforce management in 2024? For me, it's really about caring for people. Um, helping them discover meaning and purpose in their work and nurturing a culture of growth and development. It's important for people in a company to understand why are they doing what they do today and how is it aligned as well to their personal values. By putting people first, we are always creating a future where technology and human connection coexist harmoniously. Um, no technology can still fully replace humans. So the true sense of HR lies in our connection to people and it's vital for us to strike a balance between harnessing technology and innovation, revenue and profitability, um, AI particularly, um, recognizing the importance of human and our people. So really blending that sense of human purpose and also making the most of the vast amounts of technology that are available uh, to businesses today. Thank you very much for that, Marika, and thank you for taking the time to join us today. So again, thank you very much, um, uh, Paul, for, for this opportunity. Um, it's, it's been an honor uh, to be part again of uh, Chief of Staff Asia. And I really look forward to, to hearing more from you and learning as well. Um, on your next segments or your next uh, videos. And thanks to you for watching. At Chief of Staff Asia, we're here for the love of HR. And that love is getting bigger every day. Uh, we've got more content, more newsletters, more case studies sharing across all our platforms every week. We're also launching the HR Stars Awards, celebrating the best of HR people and practices in four different markets for 2024. That all starts with the Philippines, where nominations are set to open later this month. Uh, look out also for Singapore uh, from April, uh, Indonesia from June, uh, and Malaysia from October. Uh, like and subscribe at www.chiefofstaff.asia and you'll never miss a beat or any of these uh, updates. I'm Paul Howell and this has been the HR Agenda.